الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير الهدى هدى نبينا محمد بن عبد الله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أمة الإسلام after about seven hours إن شاء الله we will have entered into the blessed month of Ramadan and in the month of Ramadan, as everyone knows, including the brand new Muslim, and we have a few of them, there are a number of ibadat that Allah Ta'ala has legislated exclusively for this month. Year in and year out, we have our struggles. This is a golden opportunity for everyone without any exception, with all of our issues, everyone here, all of our issues to turn to Allah Azza wa in repentance, in devotion, in dua, asking him for the things that we need in terms of an addition in our hidayah, in being guidance, our children, our risk, the sufferings of the Muslims throughout the globe. The door of Ramadan is about to open inshallah. So therefore we want to give a message about how we can get the optimum and maximize what is in front of us in this month? Because in the book of Allah Ta'ala there are many ayat, many, in which Allah Ta'ala mentions and describes the worship of those people from the mushrikeen and the munafiqeen and the ahlul kitab, where they worship Allah and they don't know what they're doing. As he mentioned in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حرف. From the people of those who worship Allah and they don't know what they're doing. There are many, many ayat telling us and describing for us their situation in the hopes that we would take heed and not be of those people. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَعْمَالُهُمْ كَسَرَابَ بِقِيَةٍ يَحْسَبُهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَاءَ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَهُ لَمْ يَجِدُهُ شَيْئًا وَوَجَدَ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ 
فَوَفَّاهُ حِسَابُهُ وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ The deeds of those people who disbelieve, their deeds are like the maraj that's in the desert. The man is traveling in the desert and he sees some water over the horizon. He takes some time to get to the water. What he perceives as water, when he gets there, he finds that it's nothing. When he dies, he finds that he didn't do anything. His fast in Ramadan, the issues that he tried to put forth, he dies, thinking before he died he was doing a good thing. When he gets there, Yom al he doesn't have anything. But instead, he'll get to the mirage, or the place where he thought it was water, and he'll find Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him his hisab, and Allah is quick in taking people to account. There are many ayat like that, and many hadith. So today's message is, what are some of the many things that have been legislated for us to do in order to get the maximum and the optimum out of Ramadan? Now I'm not talking about the fast in which the person gets some rewards. I'm talking about the fast in which the person is going to maximize, put himself in the position, like we want to be put in the position to get the most amount of money in the small amount of efforts that we put forward. At the top of the list, ikhwani, if a person wants to maximize his or her rewards, fawab, in the month of Ramadan, then let his fast be for Allah. Let his fast be with ikhlas. Let his niyyah be that the month of Ramadan is a rukun from the arkan of al-Islam. And Allah Ta'ala is going to question him about it, yawm al-qiyamah. And let him not look at the month of Ramadan as something that is drudgery and difficult upon him and it's a burden upon him. So he was fretting every time a day of Sha'ban passed and Ramadan became closer to him, he didn't like his situation. Someone may say, but I thought that the month of Ramadan and fasting in Al-Islam is the one ibadah from the ibadat that it is clearly exclusively for Allah. The hadith that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned has been collected by the Imam Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurara radiallahu anhu. And it is a hadith Qudsi in which Allah Ta'ala said, Kullu amr ibn Adam lahu illa siyam fahuwa li wa ana ajzi bih. All of Adam's, all of Adam's children, his sons, all of their actions are for him, for them. With the exception of fasting. Fasting is for me and I'm the one who's going to reward the fast. Which goes to show when people fast, their reality of fasting is between them and Allah. No one knows for sure whether or not they're fasting. As we pray, people see other people praying. So he may be praying and he doesn't have wudu. When he gives sadaqah and he spins fi sabilillah, the one who received the sadaqah knows that he gave sadaqah. People who receive the sadaqah from the masjid and other than that to distribute it knows that he pays sadaqah. But the fast is between him and Allah. So how can I say here today, if you want to maximize your fast, your fast should be for Allah, your niyyah should be for Allah. That's because, ikhwani, there are some people from amongst the Muslims year in and year out, who their fast is not for Allah. They make the fast of Ramadan because they're in an environment of people who are fasting. And as a result of that, they're fasting because the people are fasting. Like the hadith of Munkar and nakir when they come to the dead person, who's a munafiq or a kafir, and they ask him, what did you have to say about that man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The munafiq or the kafir will say, I heard the people saying something, so I said what the people said. I saw the people fasting, so I did what they did. But I didn't do it because the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told us, من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه Anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan with iman, with belief, with sincerity, he does it with iman, and he seeks to be rewarded from and by Allah, then his previous sins will be forgiven. There are those people from this ummah who, when the month of Ramadan comes, they take it as an opportunity to lose weight. And they rely upon weak, fabricated hadith. They said that the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sumu Tasahu. Fast and you'll gain good health. No doubt, fasting in the month of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan, it has its medicinal value. The ulama of Islam wrote about that issue. And I'm not here to deny that or to reject that. But that hadith is weak. And if your niyyah was to fast in order to lose weight, your niyyah was to fast in order to save money, then you don't get the maximum and the optimum out of fasting the month of Ramadan. 
In addition to that, ikhwani, as it is the case in all of the ibadat of al-Islam, you have to have the niyyah for Allah, ikhlas for Allah, al-iman billah. And the second issue, if you want to optimize and maximize the reward of fasting, you have to make an effort and make jihad in order to have your fast in accordance to the sunnah. And don't just fast the haphazard fast of the culture. The haphazard fast that we learned from the time when we were little children. The child doesn't comprehend or understand the reality of fasting. It is tadrib for the child. It's just training for him. But for an adult to fast and it's still training for him is a problem. If he's not understanding the essence of the fast. And the understanding and comprehension of the essence of the fast comes from the practical example of Al-Mustafa Al-Ameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sallam As I mentioned, Ikhwani, the people go into these and they come out with nothing or they come out with some. The Prophet gave us an example Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam about that pillar which is greater than fasting. And that is the pillar of a salat. He told us Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sallam Inna Ar-Rajul Layansarif Fama Kutiba Lahu Min Salati Illa Ushruha وَتِسْعُهَا وَثُمُنُهَا وَسَبْعُهَا وَسُدُسُهَا وَخَمْسُهَا وَرُبُوهَا وَثُرْثُهَا وَنَصْفُهَا It is possible that a person will pray the salat, like the salat of al-Jumma, like the salat of al-Fajr, like the salat of al-Isha, like the salat of al-Eid. It's possible that a man or a woman, a person will pray the salat, and after completing the salat, nothing will be written for them except nine, ten percent of the prayer. Nine percent of the prayer. Seven, six, five, four percent of the prayer. A third or a half. So some people get 100 percent, 90 percent, 80 percent. Some people turn around after praying and they don't get anything. They don't get anything from the salah. The same issue is with the fast of Ramadan. He told us, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, Rubba sa'im laysa lahu min siyamihi illa al-ju' wa al-atish. It is possible that a person will fast and he doesn't get anything from his fast except that he makes himself hungry and thirsty because he didn't do the sunnah. He didn't fast and he didn't come to know about what did the Prophet do وسلم, in his fast. And you can't follow the sunnah in fasting without exposing yourselves to the books of Al-Islam that write these issues. Those sites on the internet that educate you about the ahkam of fasting. Those classes in the different masajid, like this masjid, in which a person will come to learn about the ahkam, and they are many. If a person is ignorant about them, he won't get the maximum, the optimum of fasting. He'll get rewarded inshallah, but he won't get 100% because it went against the sunnah. Or he didn't do what the sunnah said. Like the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, تَسَحَّرُوا فَإِنَّ فِي الصُّهُورِ بَرَكَةً Get up in the morning and take suhoor before you fast, because in the suhoor it's barakah. From the blessing and the barakah of the suhoor is that it's different. It makes our fast different from the Yahud and the Nasara. In this environment, we have to make jihad in that effort. From the barakah of fasting and taking the suhoor is the fact that he told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَن لَمْ يُبَيِّتَ السِّيَامِ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَلَا سِيَامَ لَهُ the one who doesn't make a niyyah the day before fasting, he doesn't make a niyyah in the night time that he's going to fast tomorrow, then he doesn't have any fast. I'm not here to explain the details of that. But if a person gets up to take the suhoor every day, in the suhoor is barakah, in the suhoor is his niyyah, just as making wudu is the niyyah for your salah. And you don't have to stand in the salah and say, no way to an usalli khalfa had al imam. You don't have to say that. The niyyah is not on your tongue. And those weak hadith that tell you that you have to, as a new Muslim, memorize additional words, I intend to fast this day of Ramadan, that's not something that you have to do. All you have to do is get up for the suhoor every day, and that is your niyyah, insha'Allah ta'ala. So the sunnah of fasting, ikhwani, requires if a person wants to get the barakah. And as we mentioned in a khutbah a few months before, Al-Barakah is the ziyad of the khayr. You do something small, and Allah Ta'ala gives you a lot of rewards, maximizing your, your efforts in something that you did a little bit. He also told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the ahkam of fasting, and making your fast in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
لا تزال أمتي على سنتي ما لم تنتظر بفطرها النجوم ما أمة will not cease to be upon my sunnah as long as they do not delay the time to break the fast. He said in another hadith similar to it, لا يزال الناس بخيرا ما عجل الفطر الفطر The people will not cease to be in a situation of good as long as they hurry up and they don't delay the fast. So the man who doesn't know the ahkam of fasting, the mu'adhan is making the adhan Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar for maghrib and he's sitting there making dua. That's not the psalm of the Prophet ﷺ. So we have to learn the correct dua from the sunnah. And not the dua that is weak. Allahumma sumtu laka. No. We have to come to know about the ahkam of what did the Prophet do in order وسلم, to maximize and optimize the reward of fasting. Number three, brothers and sisters in Al-Islam. I advise you if you want to optimize the reward of fasting, to abandon those many weak hadith that have been introduced in this religion in all aspects of Al-Islam. Especially in those ibadat that have a lot of rewards like fasting. The scholars of Al-Islam, they put their weapons and they got their weapons ready and they expose and explain these hadith for their reality. That they are lies and their fabrications. And many of which, they encourage us to be lazy. Many of, of them, they, they, they help us not to maximize our reward. Like the famous hadith that we hear on the member every Ramadan. See, people are sending them around in text messages. We get them in the chain emails every year, throughout the course of Ramadan. Like the weak hadith that encourages us to sleep. Noam as saim ibadah. The person who's fasting when he goes to sleep, that's ibadah. So a person reads that hadith with ikhlas, he believes that it's okay to wake up for Salat al-Fajr, he takes suhoor, he makes fajr, he goes to sleep until Salat al-Dhuhr. And then he wakes up at Dhuhr and he prays Dhuhr and he goes to sleep until Asr. When does he wake up? An hour before Maghrib. And then he wakes up, he makes wudu, and then he makes Salat al-Asr. And then he sits in his musalla and he takes the other week hadith. Whoever looks at his sibha in the month of Ramadan, he doesn't have to use it, he just looks at the sibha. Looking at the prayer breeze in Ramadan is ibadah. So he waits one hour into Maghrib doing nothing other than disobeying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam by introducing and engaging in innovations in the religion. So avoid the weak hadith in the month of Ramadan that encourage you to sit back and not to do anything. As for the individual who has to work during the night time, and that's his situation, when he wakes up and goes back to sleep, then his situation is between him and Allah. Allah wants ease for you as he mentioned in the Quran, in the ayahs of fasting. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرُ لَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرُ He wants to make things easy for you and not difficult. The one who goes to Mecca or Medina and he's making itikaf right now. Jet lag, the ibadat of the night time. He has to sleep during the daytime. He's not to blame. He's not blameworthy. But we're talking about here in Birmingham. Sleeping all day, thinking that that's ibadah, is not what the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. If a person wants to optimize the rewards of the blessed month of Ramadan, then let him know that Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. We are fasting in the month of Ramadan. From the wisdom that fasting is prescribed in Ramadan is because the Qur'an was revealed in this month. Allah could have legislated fasting in one of the sacred months like Muharram, Rasulullah called Muharram the sacred month of Allah. Shahrullah Muharram. That's the month of Allah. It could have been legislated in Rajab, a month in which the Arabs and Jahili used to look at as being serious. They would not engage people in fighting in that month. But fasting was legislated in this month because of the Quran. As Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Shahrul Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fi al-Quran. Hudan lil-nasi wa bayinatin min al-huda wal-furqan. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمَ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed as a guidance and something that makes clear 
the guidance for mankind. So anyone from amongst you who is present in his station, he is muqeem, he's not a musafir, let him fast because it's the month of Ramadan. Not only ikhwani is the month of Ramadan, the month of the Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the month of the other revelations that Allah Ta'ala revealed, showing us that we have to engage in the book of Allah. Out of all of the ibadat, feeding people, breaking their fast, all of that is good. But there's no ibadah after the wajibat of Ramadan that can compete with reciting the Qur'an, turning to the Qur'an, reading it, listening to it, finding about its tafsir, all of different aspects of dealing with the Qur'an. We have to raise our game in the month of Ramadan. The Prophet told us, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, unzilat suhufu Ibrahim, awwal laylatin min shahri Ramadan. وَأُنزِلَتِ التَّوْرَاةَ لِسِتٍ مَضَتْ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ وَأُنزِلَ الْإِنْجِيلَ لِثَلَاثٍ عَشْرَةَ مَضَتْ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ وَأُنزِلَ الْأَذْزُبُورَ لِثَمَانٍ لِثَمَانٍ عَشْرَةَ خَلَتْ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ The suhuf of Ibrahim were given to him in the first night of Ramadan. And the Torah was given to Musa after six days passed at Ramadan. And the Injil was given to Isa after 13 days expired from Ramadan. And the Zubur was given to Dawood after 18 days passed in the month of Ramadan. This is the month of engaging oneself in the recitation of the Qur'an. And what do we mean by the recitation of the Qur'an? Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, from what she learned from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and what she taught the people after her, was that in the month of Ramadan she used to command the people of the community who had something written down of the Qur'an to send it to her. And she would read the book of Allah, although she memorized all of the Qur'an from that which was written down. Al-Imam Malik, the great Imam of Al-Islam, the Imam of al Medina, He used to stop teaching people classes in the month of Ramadan. He would stop sitting with the ulama in the month of Ramadan. And he would read the book of Allah from the Mus'haf, although Al-Imam Malik memorized the Qur'an. And that's because of the instruction of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يُحِبَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَلْيَقْرَ الْمُصْحَفِ Anyone who wants to love Allah, and he wants to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then let him read from the Qur'an. So the Hafiz, the Hafiz, who's going to pray with us in the month of Ramadan, he's not going to eat a lot when it's time to break his fast, and he's going to do in the course of the day, take the Mus'haf. And he's going to look in the Mus'haf and he's going to read it. Although he memorized the Qur'an. Because he knows that's the Sunnah. He knows in that is blessing. He knows in doing that you get the depth of the Qur'an. So those of us who are a'ajim, it's even more befitting for us to look at the book of Allah. Again, ikhwati fillah. What is the meaning of reading the Qur'an in Ramadan? Is it what some of the masajid do where we just want to finish the Qur'an and we compromise the tajweed of the Qur'an? The Prophet wasallam used to prohibit the people from reading the Qur'an like that and chopping it up and reading it wrong and reading it quickly. He said that's the recitation of the cow. He told his companions who were the best of the people. And in it is a lesson for us. مَنْ أَحَبَّ يَقْرَ الْقُرْآنِ غَدًّا كَمَا أُنزِرَ فَلْيَقْرَ عَلَىٰ كِرَاءَةِ ابْنِ أُمْ عَدٍ Anyone who wants to read the Qur'an, purely the way it was revealed. People read the Qur'an, but they come away from their recitation with 10%, 5%, some come away with 100%. He's mahir with the Qur'an, an expert. Anyone who wants to read the Qur'an purely the way it was revealed, then let him read it the way Abdullah ibn Mas'ud reads the Qur'an. So he just didn't allow the companions read the Qur'an however you want to read the Qur'an. From the ibadat in al-Islam that will cause us ikhwani to get the maximum out of the month of Ramadan, is something I want to share with you and that is, just as we have to know that the Qur'an is the month of, Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an, Ramadan is also the month of jihad. And whether it's Sha'ban, we're not going to be afraid to say that. And whether it's Ramadan, we're not going to be shy to say that. Ramadan is the month of jihad. It's the month of jihad. The greatest war known to mankind historically took place in the month of Ramadan. And that was the war of Badr. 
in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَ لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّةٌ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ إِذْ تَقُولُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَلَنْ يَكْفِيَكُمْ أَنْ يُمِدُّكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِثَلَاثَةِ آلَافٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُنْزَلِينَ Verily Allah helped you, Ya Muhammad, helped you in this ummah on the day of Badr, when you and your companions were few and you were lowly. So fear Allah in the hopes that you'll get the shukr and you'll be thankful. Remember when you said to your companions, isn't it enough for you companions that Allah will send down 3,000 malaika to help you in this war? Jibreel, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him, Ya Muhammad, what do you have to say about the people who participate in the war better? He said, they're the best of this ummah. The best of the companions are the people participated in Badr. Jibril said, and also the malaika. The malaika who participated in that war are the best of the malaika. That happened in the month of Ramadan. Now which jihad am I talking about? Am I talking about the jihad that some people have this concept of the fiasco that happened in Palestine a few days ago with all of the problems that we're suffering from in Palestine? Now I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking to this community, the men and the women of this community, the month of Ramadan is the month in which you have to fight your shaitan who's going to come to you to try to deviate you from continuing with your jihad of fast. The new Muslim, this first Ramadan, Iblis, shaitan, the devil is going to come to you and say, oh, it's difficult. Oh, I have a headache. And he's going to whisper to you to break your fast. No, you have to make jihad against your nafs. The Prophet told us, as I already mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the virtues of fasting. From those virtues, he said, مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمٍ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ النَّارِ خَنْدَقًا كَمَا بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Anyone who fasts one day فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ He's a mujahid when he fasts. He fasts one day فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ even if he's in jihad or he's not in jihad, he's in jihad. He's fi sabirillah. Anyone who fasts one day, Allah Ta'ala will put a ditch between him and the hellfire. The distance of that ditch is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. Another hadith says 70 years. Another hadith said 100 years. So we have to make jihad. And from the jihads that we have to perform, inshallah, if Allah allows us to see the middle of Ramadan and the end of Ramadan. Many of us did not get the necessary rest before Ramadan because we're ripping and running. We're working hard. So we wanted to get some rest before Ramadan, but it wasn't possible. The schedule just doesn't allow. When you start fasting the month of Ramadan, you come to the masjid more and you make more efforts in the things that we do. Shaitan comes to you and he starts making wiswats. And he says to you, you've done enough of the taraweeh. Take a break on this particular night. So he takes a break on that night to go and watch the TV. And that's a problem. The TV. He told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَنْبِهِ مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَنْبِهِ Anyone who stands up and prays in the month of Ramadan, the night prayer, taraweeh prayer, his previous sins will be forgiven. If he does it with iman, if he does it seeking his reward for Allah. Anyone who catches Laylatul Qadr and he prays on that night, the last ten nights, the Prophet used to tie up his, his waistband, getting serious. But what happens is, a shaitan will come to you and say to you, Ya Abdullah, you put forth a lot. Ya Abdullah, you're tired. The month of Ramadan is the month of making yourself tired. We don't have to travel to better to put our lives on the line like the companions did. And they were persistent. They traveled in the month of Ramadan. Some of them were fasting, some of them were not fasting. All we have to do is just maintain the fast and maintain the jihad of coming every night if you have the ability to pray the salat of at taraweeh Optimizing and maximizing the rewards that Allah Ta'ala has preserved for those people who fast the Ramadan that the Quran has instructed with and that the Prophet has brought Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it is the goal and it is the objective and it's the message of this khutbah 
Let not anyone get fooled by shaitan where he comes and he makes that wiswas to you during the course of this blessed month and the days and nights of this month and then you sit back and you take it easy and you relax and the rewards, they pass you by. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَنَسْأَلَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى التَّوْفِيقُ وَالسَّدَادِ Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi amma ba'du In maximizing ikhwani the rewards of the month of Ramadan I can't stress upon you enough I can't The dangers of the TV in this month I'm not of those people who went overboard And without knowledge said that the TV is the Dajjal It's the one-eyed Dajjal I don't say that, that's not true That's not true but the TV is definitely one of the weapons of a shaitan and one of his most effective weapons in the month of Sha'bah and the month of Ramadan. Many of our women, they are glued to the TV in terms of those Bollywood movies and other than Bollywood movies. It's just part of the daily schedule. And that is something that in the month of Ramadan and outside of the month of Ramadan, it's not a praiseworthy act. But the point is, in this month, we have to take it as an opportunity to try to break ourselves off of the TV the way we watch it. Where it has become part and parcel of the everyday activity that the Muslim does. And the one who the TV is a part of his life and his lifestyle, you will find him having a low himma. You'll find a lot of problems that come as a result of watching TV. The effect and the impact of the TV on our children. And they grow up on that TV. He doesn't get the milk of his mother. He gets the milk from the can, he gets the milk from the bottle. Artificial milk from the cow or the goat. But then when it comes to the TV, he's given that TV in order to develop him with the ideas of the TV. In the month of Ramadan, if you want to maximize, maximize and optimize your time, then you have to get away from the TV. Wallahi, when someone invites you over to his house to break the fast, that festivity in and of itself is a good thing. And we want to take care of the life. But many times when we go to those dinner dates, we wind up missing Salat al-Isha. It's a good thing to break someone's fast in the month of Ramadan. Six, seven, eight people come over. You cook the food for them. Sitting there and eating, it becomes a situation where it's very difficult to leave that place and to make it to the masjid on time. And that's one of the reasons that Kenya wanted to bring it close to home. The one who's going to lead us in Salat, you're not going to find him in the dinner dates because it's going to make him late for Isha. It's going to take him out of the frame of mind of praying that salat. Not that it's haram upon him. Not that it's haram. Now that breaking the fast for other people, giving them food to break their fast, is something Al-Islam encourage, and it will take your time away if it's not done properly. What do you think is the case with the TV? With the TV. So if you want to optimize the reward that you are bound to get inshallah in the month of Ramadan, then we have to turn that TV set off. I encourage every man who's responsible for his house, unplug the TV today. Let them get the last few hours with the TV if you want. But in the month of Ramadan, don't turn that TV on. And don't let shaitan come to you and say, the news, the news. Look at the news on the internet if that's what you want to do. It's about time management in the month of Ramadan. In this way, Ikhwani, yes, you'll be tired at the end of the month, but the rewards that Allah Ta'ala has prepared for those people who are fasting correctly are far greater than what a shaitan has the ability to whisper and cause us to get deviated from the goal and the objective. And I asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala by His greatest name to make this a Ramadan, inshallah, that we get the optimum out of what has been prescribed for us and that He subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for us and He gives us the tawfiq. The other thing I want to mention, Ikhwani, on behalf of the masjid again, those people who gave in order to get the carpets here, the new carpets for the month of Ramadan, may Allah ta'ala put that in your mizan of hasanat. Something about Bani Adam as the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Authentic hadith. He said that if it's cold, Benny Adam is going to say, oof. And if it's hot, Benny Adam is going to say, oof. That's how Benny Adam is. You can't please everybody. It's impossible. Some people don't like the carpet. Some people like the carpet. 
You can't please everybody. We say Alhamdulillah, we have new carpet to pray on. Let's move beyond that issue and focus on the game at, at hand. Let's move behind that issue. The people who came up with this carpet, stay in responsibility with Allah. We gave our money, you'll get your reward inshallah. Let's leave the complaints and criticisms to the side. Let's leave that to the side. So I thank you on behalf of the management here of the masjid. But we do also encourage the management and people in charge to always be careful about not going overboard and so forth and so on. But I don't think this carpet is something that's overboard. And Allah, He knows best. May Allah make it easy for us and you accept it from us and from them. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyin al kareem Aqam al-salat yarhamakum Allah. Those people were praying outside. Try not to be in front of the imam. This line right here, the first line, let them get even with the first line right here. So back up and don't be in front of the imam, the position of the imam for those who are praying to our left, outside. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah.